Hello, my friends. It's Darth Paradigm. We're going to perform a pr procedure on my uh, my Osprey. Now, this saber has kind of been going through a bit of a transformation. Uh, originally, I had removed the the uh, NeoPixel soundboard that it came with, which is uh, not the most uh, not the most elaborate uh, soundboard um, for you know NeoPixel, um, and I had replaced it with my Profi. And then I put the profi into uh, one of my shrikes and uh, returned the original NeoPixel board into here. Now it's it's not the Eco NeoPixel board, so it doesn't have smooth swing or anything like that. Uh, one of the things that had happened during the um, uh, during the transformation of the Osprey the first time was I had found. That the emitter section was connected to the switch section and sort of glued into place so that the uh, the switch aligned or the switch section aligned with the emitter section in a kind of an aesthetically pleasing way uh, well that glue had let go and uh, so the end result was that the uh, the emitter section doesn't really line up with the switch section anymore. So what I have done is I have acquired and uh, break these out of their packaging prison right now. I've acquired some timing shims. Those are little rings that uh, are used to uh, space out the uh the gap between the the emitter and the switch section and sort of as far as the threading goes it's, it stops the threading at intervals so that you can get a bit of a better alignment so that's what i have here i have my timing shims and uh it looks like let's see what else did they provide oh they provided some uh some uh knurled uh, thumb screw knobs oh wow that's really cool I can definitely make use of these so I have a gold one and I have a black one very cool and I have also they provided me with a allen wrench and uh, several uh, blade retention screws that I can actually make use of with this hilt. So I have some of these. So the full package. Oop. <laughs> these things they like to get lost. And so I have four timing shims. Four? No, I have five. And they look like this. And they're very, very thin. And what you do, I also have a new pommel. Uh, on an aside, I'm considering getting a new, um, a new grip section for this. There's a grip section that's for sale on the, uh, Crimson Dawn website. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a simpler black, uh, grip section with kind of lines. I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Um, I've kind of altered this a little bit. The, this right here is kind of, it's not as attractive as it used to be and I'm considering actually taking the shroud off completely and uh, maybe wrapping it or or I'll get that new uh, that new um, grip section like I said uh, first things first let's get to the point so let's try these out hopefully they fit and you can see the glue I tried to remove the glue as much as I dare try i can get in there at some point with some uh you know some kind of chemical to remove the residual glue but i think i'm going to leave it for now so i'm not sure if the timing shim will fit on this but let's see that should go here and if it's hmm, it's a little bit a little bit large but we'll see how it works. 
the goal is to get this to line up with the switch more or less like that. Can you see it? Like that. And that doesn't quite line up. So I'm going to throw in another timing shim. This could be a futile, uh, <laughs> a futile uh, effort to be sure. It doesn't always work. Let's put another one on there. I don't know. These may come in different thicknesses too. To be perfectly honest, this is my first uh, experiment with timing shims. I've never actually done this before. It may take several. The only thing is this kind of sticks out. You can feel it. So about the squeakies. Who knows, I may end up putting all of them on here. And still, I may not have success. And then I may have to resort to glue. Although I prefer not to do that. Well. I have one more. So that's all of them. That's all five. Well, you know what's interesting? And this isn't actually that bad. This is a, kind of an alternative I was considering. The switches kind of line up and to the side of the emitter and I have a um, Sabre Trio Skylar and on that hilt the switch is kind of on the side so I'm actually thinking now you kind of ignite it like this that's actually not bad It's not bad at all. It lines up pretty well. These switches lining up with uh, with these holes here. And this is the top of the emitter and it's lining up fairly well with the with the grip section. I think I could get used to that. I think I can live with that. It's probably the best I can expect. Now uh, these shims do stick out a little bit. But now that I've got five of them in there, it's thick enough that it doesn't really feel like I will injure myself on it. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Now, the other thing I want to do, let's see if we can get this to take a brand new retention screw in here. The threading's a little bit screwed up now. Yeah, I don't think this is going to, the uh, female threading is, is pretty worn out. So what, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a go. I'm actually going to try to uh, 
well, I'm not gonna try, I'm actually gonna do it. But I am gonna try this without the shroud. And I think that'll probably feel okay considering the, um, the pommel that I've acquired and the fact that, like I said, I may wrap this, kind of turn it into a Ram Coda. Or I might get a completely new, a completely new grip section. Now this grip section does look really cool without the shroud, so this is something I may just live with as it is. That's kind of like a, a rom coda vibe. Now I have to return this screw here because this is what holds the electronics in place. So that's the great thing about the Crimson Dawn uh, you know, the system that they have here, well, it's an LGT system, but and there are companies that sell, you know, similar or the same hilts. So that's tight enough. And that's tight enough. So that's not too bad. And you can mix and match all the parts. So this is actually coming out kind of nice. Now, the one thing I don't like is I don't like this as a as the pommel. It's a, kind of a, a coupler. And uh, it's okay. But this needs a little bit more flair. So what I have is a Dragoon pommel. So look at that beauty of that thing. That is really nice. I think this thing's coming together nicely. Hmm. What do you think? Kind of liking it. Oh, I really am. Yeah. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Question is, should I use these? Would that look completely odd? I think it may look completely odd sticking off the side. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, blade back on here. Unfortunately, it's a 36 inch blade. So it's a bit of a, bit of a long thing. Let's see. <clears throat> you probably can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> but too high up. Nothing too exciting. Hello, Dark Dark Thinky. My kitty just showed up. Fortunately, we're almost done with this video. And I can pay him attention. And uh, I'm sure you guys have had just about enough. All right, well, let's check this out. There we go. Oh. Too much. I like it. 
think I'm going to try this with the uh, 32 inch blade and uh, yeah I think I'm onto something here so there you go there's my new and improved Osprey I think at this point it probably deserves a, a brand new name but I like the way it turned out this is very nice I might still get that grip section but I, I don't know I'm wishy-washy and, and you know you can do just about anything with these things and they're not very expensive so why the hell not right anyway hope you enjoyed watching me fiddle around with uh with this thing and hope it was uh informative help you know help you to uh you know plot your own uh modifications or um whatever plans you might have for uh for you know one of the hills that maybe you acquired from crimson dawn or one of the other companies that sells similar hills but um anyway i thank you for watching i hope everyone has a, a wonderful uh rest of the day and or evening and uh may the force be with you until next time take care now bye